Hi everyone, uh, thank you for attending uh, this webinar co-organized by HFOXY Technologies and Several Nine. So I am Baptiste Asman, I work for HFOXY Technologies, but today we host uh, our uh, partners of uh, Several Nine, and they will speak to you about MySQL and uh, how to load balance uh, MySQL using HFOXY open source software. Alex, uh, it's up to you. Sure, and uh, so maybe before we do that, um, we'll just do some a, a few housekeeping um, uh, topics, and we also just want to run a quick poll um, to ask um, everyone in the audience for their for their um, details on on a question that we have. But just very briefly, the webinar is recorded, and we will make the recording and slides available to you uh, after the webinar. If you want to review the slides or just watch the webinar again. Uh, we'll send them out after the session and you can always ask uh, questions during the webinar by using the question section of your control panel so feel free to ask uh, questions at any point during the next hour and we'll answer them as we go along thanks very much but uh, to begin with we just wanted to ask um, all of you um, a quick question and that is to give us just a good better idea of um, of, um, of the usage that um, everyone in the audience has uh, in terms of uh, load balancers, uh, so if you wouldn't mind just giving us um, your feedback here, you can you can take multiple uh, choices as well if you want. I'm just going to give you a few seconds to uh, participate in this poll. So thank you for placing your votes. So whether it's HA proxy or Aloha or HA proxy enterprise, of course, and then F5, Netscaler, MySQL proxy, or maybe you use some other type of uh, proxy. Um, so thanks for thanks for participating. I'm just going to close the poll now and share the results. Right. So not too surprisingly, but um, the vast majority of you are, um, are of course using HA proxy, which is great. And then, but similarly, quite a lot of you are also using other proxies, which aren't listed here. Uh, so that's um, that's interesting, and maybe you can let us know in the question section what what sort of proxies you use uh, as alternatives. But this is good to know, and uh, with this information, I'll um, hand over to you, Alex. Um, thanks, JJ. Um, hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Alex Xu, and um, in this session, um, I'm going to talk about uh, load balancing uh, MySQL servers, specifically with uh, you know HI proxy. And uh, we'll go over a simple uh, HFProxy configuration file and also talk about uh, deploying HFProxy in a fault tolerant deployment uh, setup. And finally, also go over some uh, deployment scenarios with different MISO cluster types. So, first, um, why would you want to load balance the backend? Um, primarily, I think uh, it's you know, to be able to better utilize the server. Um, and uh, the reason for that is, um, you know, uh, with HA proxy, uh, you can prevent a single server to become too overloaded uh, with connections. And so it's it's kind of like having some kind of like an overload protection uh, mechanism that you can use. And for a database server, that's quite important because with MySQL server, it's important that you don't overload it with too many connections because the way the MySQL server is, is implemented is that you have uh, one thread per connection. So if you have too many connections running on the MySQL server, they uh, start to fight for resources and, and you start to see uh, things slowing down. So having a, a load balance in front of the MySQL server will help you to, to keep your, your server uh, utilized as optimal as possible. Uh, so it's a good way to throttle the normal connections that comes into your database backend. And also, um, using a load balancer and exit proxy here, um, you're able to maximize the availability of your database backend here because uh, um, you can have one or more servers behind the exit proxy instance. Right? And you can fail over between a MySQL server that has gone down uh, to the other one that is still up and running. So you can, you can limit the number of, of single point of failures here. And also, uh, using a load balancer, you can maximize the throughput by distributing the workload um, across uh, your database backend servers that you have. And of course, you can also 
scale out the performance of your site or your service by, by starting small. Um, if you hide uh, the number of backend, uh, database backend service that you have behind the HR proxy, from an application point of view, um, you know, you don't have to rely on, on scaling out the application uh, side of with, you know, for example, with, you know, making changes to the configuration files. Uh, instead, you can just you know, point your application server towards the, the HR proxy instance. And in the back end, you can uh, automatically scale out the back end uh, part without disturbing the, the application front end. So uh, an intro on, on what HR proxy is. Um, it's, it's an open sourced um, load balancer and a proxy for um, TCP and HP based applications. And uh, of course, as you know, it's, it's, it's a very popular load balancer and it's being used by many, um, many and very you know, high profile sites like uh, Reddit, Reddit um, GitHub, Stack Overflow and so on. And HR proxy is a so-called reverse proxy, um, which basically means that you know, clients connecting to the proxy uh, won't know if there is one or 10 servers behind it. So it's completely, you know, completely high in backend uh, from the clients, as I mentioned. And HFROXY, you know, is primarily used as a load balance for the application and the web tier, uh, but it's also an excellent tool to use uh, as well for the database backends. And this project um, started around uh, 2000, and it was initially a, a so-called hack to, to rewrite some HTTP headers during a benchmark test. And uh, the first stable version came out uh, around 2001, so it's been around for quite some time. And um, so it's very, you know, battle tested and proven in the field. Um, currently, the the most deployed version is probably 1.4, uh, which people are mostly still on. Uh, but uh, the new version 1.5 came out in June, and it has a, a, a lot of new features. Let's uh, some, for example, SSL support, IPv6, and things like that. But uh, for the database to load balance database backend, we really don't. Uh, need that kind of features, so we, you know, so 1.4 is is perfectly fine to use for the database backend still. Uh, so I'm not going to talk to more about the the, the new features of 1.5 uh, since we just rely basically on on the TCP load balancing part here. Um, as default, uh, HR proxy is a is a single process and event driven, so it's extremely fast. And there was a benchmark done around 2009. Um, where using a single HR proxy instance uh, was able to saturate a single um, 10 gigabit link with over 100,000 uh, sessions per second. So if you think about the hardware that we have uh, at that time and the hardware that we have now, uh, you, you realize that it's going to be very difficult to saturate a single HR proxy uh, uh, process here. So let's look at um, a simple configuration file for, for HR proxy. Um, the configuration is, is a you know, simple uh, text file. And uh, it uh, consists of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, multiple sections. And we have a global section, which is uh, um, for process-wide settings. We have also a front-end section, which is for incoming connections from the clients. And that's where, for example, you, where you bind the network device and port. And then there's the backend section, uh, which is for outgoing connections to the backend servers. Uh, you can also specify both the front and the backend settings combined. And, um, and that's when you use this called listen section. And as default, also, you have a default section, which uh, provides default settings for, for the sections mentioned above here. Um, on the side here, you have the, the global setting, which is the process-wide settings here. And you can see here that um, we uh, specify that we want to log to syslog. We have a max con uh, setting value here of 40,000, which means that this process is able to handle at most 40,000 connections coming into it. There's also spread checks uh, option set here, uh, which means that uh, we want to we want to spread um, the so-called health check request that HR proxy is making towards the backend servers by randomizing the request uh, with three percent. So if we have many HR proxy uh, instances running, we don't want all these process uh, instances to hit the to hit the database backend at the same time. 
And then um, the no parameter here is also good to have if you have multiple processes running on the same host. And uh, if, if you have the node here and you specify a name or a string here, then you can uh, more easily identify which HAProx instance is doing what in the, in the logs here. Um, the default setting, as I mentioned, is, uh, is a section which is mandatory and uh, it specifies the default for other sections here. And for, for the database backend, um, the most important settings here that you, that you specify in HAProxy is the timeout settings. There are also um, other TCP settings that you can use, but it's more, more optimal for, for the application and web tier front uh, than, the, the back, uh, than the database backend. So here we have a timeout queue setting of 3.5 seconds. So the queue setting here means that if you reach the, the max connection uh, value of 40,000 connections, then a new connection coming in will uh, be put into a queue and wait at most 3.5 seconds before um, to see if there's, a, there's an opening, uh, opening slot. If there's not, then that connection will be um, discarded. The uh, timeout connect setting um, determines how long to wait for a connection to a backend uh, server to succeed. And then the timeout client and timeout server connection, uh, sorry, timeout client and timeout server settings determines you know, um, the inactivity that you have on the client side and the inactivity that you have on the server side. And these two last um, options are, are, are important that they have the same value here, so you don't have a mismatch between the, the settings here. And also you have to remember on the MySQL server side, um, they also have a inactivity setting, which I think is as default is around eight hours. So um, you have to think about, for example, if you have an HA proxy configuration uh, that is used for, let's say, an OLTP application-based uh, uh, service, then, and also if you have applications that are running you know, long reporting queries, uh, then these settings can uh, impact the, the, uh, the performance. So for long running queries, for example, which, you know, might take minutes to run, um, having a, a, a timeout on the timeout service setting of two minutes might not be long enough for the query to finish. So in that case, it's a proxy will just connect, uh, disconnect that, that connection. So uh, for long running queries, you might want to look at having a separate HAProxy configuration file, which has um, larger timeout values for, for that type of queries. Or running, uh, a diff running those type of queries on a different HAProxy instance, for example. 